first thing is when you start the piece, can I sit down? Mm -hmm. I, the, the thing that you should care about is not having edges to your sound. So what I mean by that, if you start, those notes have edges. You want to, why did, who knows, but why did Rachmaninoff start this on the second beat? Because he didn't want any sense of, a, of an accent. So when you start this one, there's going to be no feeling of accenting the second beat, but maybe you go there. What I get from you a lot is I hear that and then I hear every note. Basically, all I care about is this phrase, right? So that is the first thing. Second thing is notice everything is in a piano dynamic in the beginning, but that's relative because it's a singing. You have to be above the orchestra, right? So this is with a grain of salt as far as your dynamic. When you get to mezzo forte, though, it should sound like a new sound. Mm -hmm. The same idea of fluency, the same idea that you're not going to sort of accent the beats, but it should seem like suddenly you have a different thing. Try those two ideas first from the beginning. grabbed us from the beginning. The feeling, maybe that's the goal. Then there's urgency here because of the tenudos, and then give up. Try again just by yourself. relationship should be there. Again? From time to time, what needs to happen are these things that come out of the texture when you that, for instance. I mean, this you're you're playing um, legato, which is great. But then, can you change your articulation? So I hear I hear that. I, I need to hear every once in a while something coming out of the piano. Then at two. You don't pronounce that enough. Then you become melodic, but see, you're no longer you're no longer accompanying the orchestra there. You you actually need to change. Okay, go from Piumoso with Ken. Thank you. 
I think it becomes so much more interesting because it's not just you're always a texture on these two pages, but sometimes you add to the the melodicism of this, right? Or you add to some interesting articulation. You know, you don't just want to be sort of passive. You want to constantly be transitioning. <laughs> So th this would be a scary place um, for a conductor because they would need to be able to follow you. Can you show us the tempo you want there? Yeah, the, the thing is, the orchestra needs unbelievable rhythm for you. This way, Ken will follow you. It's a little bit too free. It needs to be much more rhythmic. If not, it's very confusing for the orchestra. Can you try it again? Good. Okay, good. Now, better. Another way that very easily you can make things clear is less pedal. Can you add in less pedal now? Good. Okay, good. Then what's really good, that was clearer, and I'll bet Ken will be able to follow that. Then what you're doing is, after this eighth note, you play that slower. It shouldn't be slower. It's the same thing, okay? And I would suggest less pedal there, just like you did. Okay, try it with Ken right there. You want to try right on it? same sound. This should seem suddenly different. Remember the mezzo forte idea in the first bit? It's the same, it's just now put in a different context. Okay, so this you you have to know that it's, it's going to be hard for the orchestra, so your job is to lay down a rhythm that will be unbelievably clear for your conductor. In this case it's Ken. Go from here and we'll practice that transition. Is you 
you see, this is where the innards are covering your right hand, right? I don't know if you could tell it or not, but mm -hmm. the right, the tune always have to, has to be the most prominent. You don't want to let the accompaniment in any way like take over the melody. That's that's what just happened. Can you go with there with Ken from there? <laughs> just to play your left hand and you'll see that you guys are your left hand and the orchestra is in canon with each other mm -hmm. so you I think you need to bring that out much more than what you're doing this is really not important that's just harmony there okay do, try it one time just play Ken's gonna do this then you're gonna play just your left hand together with the orchestra in terms of sound. So if you play that too soft, we don't really understand why it's there. I think we need to hear it so we understand, oh, you know what, Rachmaninoff is counter punting with uh, the orchestra. Okay, can we try that? Can we go from Pitaloso?
So I need that's more exciting if it's um, separated. See, right now if you, you play them so close, it sounds like a chord, but it should be separate. Can you try that? Careful, it's easy to get back together. It needs to be separate. should always start that, right? Can you do it again? Right. That's it. Right. Okay, so then what tempo can you play that that could happen? You know, that's the important thing. It doesn't... It doesn't if it's too presto, then that's unplayable. Then this detail doesn't come out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you do that? So I think the accelerando, though it's very exciting, it's a little bit too fast because the accelerando prepares this new tempo. Try something for me before we go on. I think you have the right idea. Um, let's see. The, the important thing is that you're really marcado. You don't really want to play longer than a split second. They're all really, really short. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's no pedal. It just means your stroke is short. So if you play long, that's why your hands are together, right? Can you try it one more time? Stop. Play the whole section. Right. actually hear the, that break? So you see right now you're pedaling through it. It's more exciting if we actually hear that break. Try again. Can you go from your cadenza just um, here? The big climax. I, I think um, you see the climax is it's building to something. It's building to D major over all this period of time, right? Just building, building, building. Then when you get to D major, you don't you don't need to press so much, in my opinion, with the tempo. There's something really romantic and exciting about like when you if you've ever climbed a mountain for like three or four days finally the view you finally see the view and the view is quite beautiful and you just want to hang out for like a day at the view because you spent four days getting there right so you understand what I'm saying? At the D major section, that's the view of where you've been leading. If you are still pressing there, it doesn't feel like as as beautiful as it could be. See the the D major section as expansive and luxurious rather than still intense. It can be intense with the sound, but you don't need to press so much. Okay. Last thing to think about is you see. These are different kinds of sounds. There's this sound, just play this for me. Play that sound. Okay. And then this is a different part of the orchestra. Can you play that? Show me how that sound is different. So there's that sound, trumpets, go ahead, play. This is tutti. You see, what you don't want to do is combine them into the same sound. So there's that trumpet sound, D major, then there's this, which is thicker, and then this is really bright. But you see, this and this are too mixed, so it doesn't seem as multi-layered as it could be. And, you know, even at the climax, you, you still want to be able to control your sound, okay? Even at the climax, you still want to have your head about you, so you don't feel like it's just rushed, but all the ideas are actually what you intend to do. <laughs> Can you try that? So you see what I'm saying? There's three sounds. One, two, three. Three different resonance of sounds. Try. Right. 